we're going to talk about why I decided to quit the carnivore diet. So I found out about the carnivore diet, like most people, through watching Sean Baker on the Joe Rogan show, I believe, in 2017. When I saw it, I was like, hmm, super keto bias, like, this sounds not good at all. I really don't know what kept me still drawn and intrigued by the concept of not eating plants whatsoever, so I gave it a try. And I tried this diet for nine freaking months. In the very beginning, I was like, this is a no-brainer. I mean, it's basically a ketogenic diet, right? It's a low carbohydrate, no starch, no sweet fruits, none of that. Ketosis or ketotic driven dietary measure. So, no-brainer. The one thing that I did that most people probably did not do was I kept everything ketogenic because I realized very early on you can never cut out your carbs and sugars unless you're in ketosis because otherwise you're on a starvation diet. Yeah, starvation diet. What I mean is if you don't have enough fat and you don't have enough carbohydrates, then your body is going to rely on protein for energy. And protein is a terrible source of energy. And the reason why protein is a terrible source of energy is because it has a difficulty to convert into glucose enough to store glycogen, glycogen within the muscles. You just are not going to get enough glycogen storage. Now you might get a little liver glycogen storage or blood sugar, but not enough to sustain energy within the muscle cell itself. Now we have to consider your carbohydrates. You're not eating any starches, no sugars. So your carbs are low, your fats are low, and now your body's going to have to go into gluconeogenesis to survive. What is gluconeogenesis? So gluco means glucose, neo means new, and genesis means to create. So you're creating new blood sugar through the process of breaking down protein within the body to, I always said in the past, to feed the fledgling brain. Because if you don't have enough fat and you're not in ketosis, then yeah, your body has to break down its own amino acids to feed itself. So you don't, you know, as a survival mechanism, if you're running from a lion real quick, if you're trying to have energy or cognitive energy, you won't fare very well just strictly eating a bunch of protein. And if your body starts using its own amino acids through gluconeogenesis, because the glycogen storage, the gas tank in your muscles, are gone and you're not in ketosis because the fats are too low then that starts to weigh on your immune system which is why we see so many people who fast having lethargy issues binging on food craving sugar for the lack of enough energy coming from either glycogen storage or even ketosis but i tried this dang diet anyway and I made it a ketogenic diet, so I would be in ketosis, and that worked. The energy levels weren't the problem for me. It was the fact that my electrolytes started to tank, and I am so sensitive to eating no carbs, I knew something was wrong when I started having oxygen issues, day twitches. <laughs> Nausea was a new symptom I've never had before while doing keto. So nausea and day twitches and obviously more night locking up of the feet and the uh, calves. Also I developed uh, rib 
like <laughs> my ribs locked up from the uh, uh, the lack of an electrolyte balance on a carnivore diet that I was so much more easily able to manage on a keto diet. What was the food that prevented me from having these terrible symptoms? Well, that was potassium. Potassium is everything and I preach it in the majority of my videos that anytime you drop out your carbohydrates, you're gonna need potassium. And since avocados have so much potassium, this is what I was eating on a keto diet that I was not eating on a carnivore diet. And I was in Bali when this went down, so it was worse. I was sweating buckets. This is what exacerbated my symptoms. You know, if I had been in tempered weather and everything was fine, I may have not noticed so quickly that my electrolytes were tanking on a carnivore diet, but being in Bali was like, I felt terrible. And then while I was there, I tried to reintroduce back avocados, especially when I went back to Australia because I did a tour there, a keto speaking tour, and I couldn't eat the avocado. It made me feel bloated. I felt, my stomach felt distended. Oh, my digestion was in knots and I couldn't understand why over the years I've eaten thousands of avocados, but one little nine months on a carnivore diet and I couldn't eat not only avocados, but also broccoli and all the cruciferous vegetables, the brassica family. It was a freaking hot <laughs> mess. And there was the inception of learning about how to ride the line of carnivore rather than going full stop two pounds of beef and fast. People who do these diets, who say that everything is so successful, my friends, that is in the beginning. After a while, it, it took me five years to even have any electrolyte issues on keto in terms of magnesium. But doing these diets without regulating your electrolytes or also why I decided to to do it or even why I had to stop became such a loud voice in my head I had to do it because it was trending I had to stop because it was ruining my health and at the same time I began to learn so much about keto and carnivore more deep and that deep dive was also learning about the need for, I know, fiber. Not for pooping, but for balancing the microbiome in your gut, in your large intestine. So without that prebiotic fiber that your gut is used to having, well, you begin to have a dysbiotic gut because we're exposed to toxins, heavy metals, and all types of things that create an imbalance in our microbiome, and fiber helps to balance it, hence why we are able to keep the steady production of diamine oxidase in our intestine, in our kidneys, and our thymus to keep the swelling and the bloating and the itchy and the stomach aches and the heart palps and the headaches away when you do carnivore out over time and you have a rebound effect of now trying to get rid of histamine and then it comes back with a vengeance and a lot of people no longer can eat these foods when they're on carnivore for too long so what is the solution well if you know you have issues with anti-nutrients and foods like salicylates and oxalates and gorgitins and nightshade selectins saponins tannins gluten all of these things these anti-nutrients in plants a really easy solution is to have just a little bit, maybe one time a day, even if it's 50 grams in weight or two ounces or a third of a cup or a quarter of a cup. If you don't want to do a lot, this is the best way to peekaboo, right? Fiber in there. Plus it gives you a variety of foods that have a little bit more potassium in them more than just meat uh, to keep your gut balanced and also being able to access potassium is so important. If you guys can tolerate avocado, ride the line of carnivore, but you don't have to do full carnivore. And always, my people, make it a ketogenic version 
of carnivore because that's another reason why people fail so miserably on a carnivore diet, which is to not eat enough fat and eat too much protein and then call it priming and then fasting and think that you're going to get better because you won't. If you guys want to learn more, go to stephaniepersen.com. Yes, stephaniepersen.com is my website. Sign up for a consultation if you need help. You can also get ready for the challenge. I think I'm going to release this in September. That gives me a, enough time to really pull it together and make it amazing. Uh, you can go to Stephanie Ketogenic on my Instagram, Stephanie the Business Person on my Facebook. And this girl is out because I got to make like 20 more videos. I know. So not that But ride the line of carnivore. Don't do strict carnivore over time. I don't care what the gurus say. They all come with little problems. They just don't mention them. Or they don't recognize the problems. Just ride the line. Be ketotic. I'm out.